Hello, and welcome to Spilling the Milk, the podcast that moms love to listen to to hear other moms share about their breastfeeding journey. Today's episode, I am so excited to share with you. My guest is Jen Lormond, and she is a mom of three boys living in New Orleans, and she is living and thriving with stage two prolapse. So she knows firsthand what it feels like to have a pelvic floor injury, to have a birth injury. Jen is an exercise physiologist and an author. Known together as the Tinkler Ladies, Jen and her business partner, Christina Walsh, have a combined 36 years of experience supporting women through prolapse, diastasis recti, and more. The Journal of Women's Health Physical Therapy featured their holistic protocol that helps women relieve pelvic floor issues, think no more pee leaks, back pain, or painful sex, without Kegels or internal vaginal devices. Today, Jen is on a mission to show more mamas what's possible for their health while honoring their dignity, time, and season of life. I could have talked to Jen for hours and hours and hours. We connected on so many levels, and I learned a lot. She was kind enough to focus on breastfeeding ergonomics, since that is the topic of our podcast, and I had no idea the impact of your posture when you're breastfeeding, how that actually can directly impact the strength of your pelvic floor and either exacerbate or support (laughs) those muscles. As you listen, you will hear Jen talk about different offerings that she has for women and great news. She's providing our listeners a special discount code on those programs and she's included some freebies. So in the show notes, you will see a link for the 9090 decompression for back and hip relief and it's also diaphragmatic breath work as a nervous system reset. I'm gonna go download this resource for myself as soon as I stop recording the podcast. And then another freebie is the six week follow-up appointment checklist for new moms. And in the episode, you'll hear Jen describe the value of that checklist. She will also describe both their signature program and their healing from home program. And for our listeners, she's offering $50 off either of those programs if you use the coupon code Spill the Milk. And if you're really interested and you just want to go right now, their website is tightenyourtinkler.com and that coupon code is Spill the Milk. Or you can hang tight and listen to our episode and learn even more um, and then head over there afterwards. Please enjoy my conversation with Jen. My name is Jen Lormond, and I am a clinical exercise physiologist, and my business partner, Christina Walsh, and I started uh, Tighten Your Tinkler. Um, And so we started Tighten Your Tinkler about four years ago now, uh, really based off of we did a clinical research study that was published in the Journal of Women's Health Physical Therapy, and that was really just to prove that the protocol that we had been using with women in private practice actually worked because the feedback that we kept getting from women was, I feel better. (laughs) And and my brain was like, what is better? Like, I need more information. I need more data. So we did a not so little thing of a two and a half year research study that was published in a couple of journals. And what happened is when, when that research study finished, we continued to have women coming to us saying, Can you put something online? My mom lives in Houston, you know, because everything, it was in our private practice at the time uh, in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically when so many women kept coming to us and approaching us, asking us to put some PDFs or some videos online, we started considering, okay, maybe this, we have to take this seriously. Mm -hmm. And, And lo and behold, that's when Titan Your Tinkler was born. But if you back up... 20 years ago, my journey really started with the birth of my first son. I have three boys and I had a normal, healthy pregnancy. And then, um, unfortunately my son was stuck in the birth canal for two hours and the hospital was understaffed, which really, uh, created some birth injuries for me. Essentially they were finally able to get him out of the birth canal, uh, with forceps in a vacuum, but he was delivered Apgar zero. Oh my and it was a very just traumatic whole thing. Um, luckily, they were able to resuscitate him. And they took him off to the nursery. I actually never got to see my child until probably seven hours after he was mm-hmm. born. Oh my goodness. Um, 
So all of that was extremely traumatic, but I didn't know any different because it was my right. first delivery. Yeah. And um, so I didn't realize that they were giving my baby sugar water in the nursery instead of my baby immediately getting being able to, you know, have skin to skin and be put to breast. Right. And, um, you know, I think all of, of that trauma also, I, he wasn't latching properly and all of these things. So as, I, you know, the couple days that I was in the hospital post-delivery, um, he, he was nursing, uh, getting colostrum, but he wasn't latching properly. And so by the time I left the hospital, like, my nipples were raw and bleeding. And I was just like, I don't know what's happening. My milk hadn't come in yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm dealing with uh, a fourth degree tear on my bottom, oh my which was a whole <laughs> another plethora of issues. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I'm dealing with all of these breastfeeding issues. I got like a quick consult with the lactation specialist before I left, which was kind of a joke. She yeah. was like, yeah, you know, looks like, you know, he's latching, you're good, you know, check. And meanwhile, uh, things were just not going well at all. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my introduction to breastfeeding. Luckily, I uh, have a very tenacious personality. And <laughs> when I set my mind to do something like this is what I'm doing. So, yeah. you know, at that time in 2004 was trying to get as much uh, information as I could um, to figure out how to make this experience better and purchased a pump and mm -hmm. began to pump to try to give my nipples a break. Thank goodness he, he was such a good baby. He was able to take a bottle and still was able to come to breast and not mm -hmm. have that nipple confusion that I know a lot of women deal with given a mm -hmm. bottle early. Um, and so we worked it out together and, um, I nursed him for six months until I found out that I was pregnant with my second son. Wow. <laughs> That's one way to do it. <laughs> yes. And my husband always feels the need to tell, like, as, as when we were younger, you know, tell all his buddies, look, you know, even if she can get her period and she's nursing, she can get pregnant. <laughs> Because he was like, wait, I don't understand. How how did you get pregnant? <laughs> she didn't have a period yet. That's a good PSA right there. <laughs> yeah, he felt like it was his duty to tell all of his friends this because he was yeah. like, I had no idea. Watch out, guys. Oh, my goodness. Wow. So your kids are really close in age. Yeah, my first two are 16 months apart. Wow. And then uh, waited nine years. And then God blessed us with number three. I always say God planned all my children. <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Um, well, I guess what was baby two like having it just so close? And then the third one having like some perspective on the whole process. Yeah. Unfortunately, my second Colin had colic. Mm. So he just, poor darling, he had acid reflux, which we didn't find out until, you know, several months down the pike, but he just fussed and fussed. And really at the breast was the only time that he was calm and at ease. So we nursed a lot. <laughs> yeah, we that's actually a good information. Um, I think that's just helpful for people to hear. Um, and I also, you know, in your case, it's like, the breastfeeding was not just for nutrition for him. It was yes. for comfort. And that's one of the things is that it's not the same. It's not just calories. Yeah. It's the being with mom. It's whatever that is that they get all the benefits. Um, so that's a really good example of how it helped with um, calm college. Well, and I think it's, I think it's, it's the energy exchange because I knew that it was going to calm him. So therefore I was calmer. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, I do believe that they, they absorb that energy, Yeah, you know? Um, and yeah, I mean, God bless all the mamas dealing with colic because mm -hmm. that is, that is very stressful. Um, very stressful. My third was quite e honestly, my easiest to nurse. Um, mm -hmm. My kids all have a genetic condition. 
And so unfortunately, my third had to have surgery, uh, a craniectomy at four months old. Um, mm -hmm. And so we, we, we nursed a lot as well for comfort during during yeah. that time. Yeah. Um, but he was much more, um, my other two, it had to be like quiet. You know, we had to be alone. You know, mm -hmm. I think the third one, they come out knowing like they got to roll with the program here. Yes. Like naps yes. are being taken in car seats yes. and on the go and you being drug everywhere. Like, I'm sorry, boo-boo, this is the way it is. Yes, so he was, true. you know, much easier to just, you know, nurse with out in public with, with a, you know, blanket over my shoulder and was quite content uh, with that. So that was really nice too, because I don't know what I would have done if he wasn't so adaptable. Yeah. And so um, you're pointing out another benefit of breastfeeding, like when your baby is sick or has to have surgery or blood drawn or anything like that, it actually is a natural pain reliever. And then again, that comfort. Um, yes. So I, that's like, I was always so thankful after they got their shots, mm. I, all of my pediatricians were like, stay in the room as long as you need nurse them. And it seemed like after, you know, a couple minutes of nursing, they forgot all about the shots and we were good to go. And I was just so grateful to have that tool, like in my yeah. mommy tool bag, especially when it's the subsequent kid, you've, uh, you've got a toddler there watching yeah. the baby cry and like, you, you need all the tools you can get. So, um. Yeah, you're helping illustrate the many benefits of, of breastfeeding. Well, and I think for the baby, you know, like as a clinician, I think about the importance of for mom, like a nervous system reset. And I think that's mm. oftentimes what baby gets from that special connection to the breast. It's, it's a neurological reset for them mm. of comfort and stability, which we all know are like the basic, you know, when you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's, mm -hmm. it's the foundation of that. So I, th I do think that, you know, when you when you, you think of it from a clinical perspective, for sure, that's what it's doing for baby too. And for mom. Yeah, I, mean, I know for me too. Like it's something that I can do for baby that I have control over. And um, mm -hmm. it's, I think it's I think it goes both ways, just like, you know, the latest medical research shows like mom benefits from baby sometimes when she's sick, you yeah. know, in in utero. It's very fascinating. Um, the latest medical research that still continues to come out uh, between mother and baby uh, during pregnancy and wow. beyond. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up about the nervous system reset, because I'm so fascinated, um, even in like the parenting realm, where more and more um, it's coming out that when the parents parent is able to regulate their own nervous system. Mm -hmm the yes. impact on the children being able to regulate their own nervous system and just the effects that can have on the environment in your house and their behavior and how they know how to regulate their emotions as they grow up. And, you know, the parents aren't there anymore. Um, I'm so fascinated by that. So for you to connect it back to breastfeeding, like, oh yeah, like things are crazy. Things are crazy. You put baby to breast and you both just like exhale <sighs> and, yes. relax. and, and there's like oxytocin and, you know, all yes. the brain chemicals. Yes. Um, so I'm going to think more about that. That's a really good point that you. That well, you I think know. the brain chemicals are what is facilitating the process, you know? Yep. Yeah. It's really, really cool. When, when, when we're talking about nervous system reset, I feel the need to just tell women right up front, we do offer something. We offer a couple of different freebies for women. Mm -hmm. um, one is something called our 9090 back and hip relief technique, which when we start getting into talking about ergonomics, this could be appropriate if you're having a lot of back discomfort, whether you're nursing or standing or whatever postpartum. Um, but we also teach the diaphragmatic breath work with that. And that really being in the position with your legs elevated above heart and the diaphragmatic breath work really serve as like an autonomic reset or mm -hmm. pulling you out of fight or flight and back into that rest and digest state um, physiologically, as well as obviously, you know, uh, emotionally. Um, yeah. So that's something that we offer that folks can go and find. I can send it to you for your show notes. Mm -hmm. If you'd like. Yeah. So you mentioned, well, what you're talking about now is useful 
basically for everyone, but yes. you touched on, let's go into, um, what are the ergonomics of breastfeeding? What are some common things that I'm sure I did wrong and led to poor posture and pain and all those things, you know, what should breastfeeding moms know about their posture and ergonomics? So uh, the first thing that I'll say is it's really difficult when you come home from hospital and you're trying to learn how to breastfeed and you're really focused on latching and all of those things. So I don't want any of this information to overwhelm or make you feel like you're not doing something right. But the, you know, as, as you bond with baby and begin to really harmonize in the process and, and baby is to breast for longer periods of time, you might notice that you're feeling tension in different parts of your body. So part of that is because the core is weak postpartum, mm -hmm. right? I mean, yeah. the, the core is extremely weak and pelvic floor is weak. And so the best thing that I can, you know, say, and I, I came prepared with props. So oh, hopefully, props. hopefully, so this is just a bed pillow that I've got tall ways. Mm -hmm. I would always recommend, um, find a nursing home in mm -hmm. your house. So whether that's a rocking chair, a recliner in your room or in the nursery, mm -hmm. find a place that's really comfortable for you, um, that you can leave some of these props there so that you can optimize your position. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is give yourself some back support because your postural muscles are weak. Mm -hmm. So just sitting up straight is going to be more challenging yep. along with holding baby and doing all of the other tasks required. The next thing that I would suggest is if you're sitting in a rocker, mm -hmm. this is, mm. we still have kid stools in my house. Yep. <laughs> so Take a kitty stool and place that on the floor and elevate your feet on top of that. That is going to provide relief to the low back and the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So those are the first two things. The second thing that I would say is, first of all, my boppy, like I, I use my boppy all the time. Yeah. It's great. Even when you, if you have had a C-section to wear your boppy, especially if maybe you have older children to protect mm. your incision um, in the first couple weeks. But what I just recommend is like, bring on the pillows. And I like, I like throw pillows because they seem to be a little firmer. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is stack a couple of throw pillows, okay? And then put your boppy on top so that literally you have baby coming up to breast. Yeah. You are not yeah. rounding forward at all because this forward head posture can contribute to pelix and urgency as well as discomfort in your neck. And I'll, I'll get to the mechanics as to why, mm -hmm. but once you've got your pillows and your boppy here, the last place that you need to elevate and prop is your elbow. Because mm -hmm. what we tend to do is once we've got baby latched and we're in this wonky position, then we're rounding our shoulders forward yep. and we get ourselves in these crazy positions. But if it's, if it's been a challenge to get baby to latch, I don't know about you, but I'm not moving. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> I'm there forever. So, yep. so 15 minutes later, you might be having some burning pain, some discomfort, mm -hmm. which can lead to further things down the line, right? Because we're now spending much more time in this position where mm -hmm. most women are rounded forward, right? And bringing yeah. themselves to baby, even though they might be using a boppy pillow. So those are the best tips. You're going to have to play with it just like mm -hmm. you would play with anything else. But I really want to speak to this forward head position because what we know is the connective tissue that holds your bladder up, the fascia, mm -hmm. it actually slings all the way around your neck. No so, way. Yes. I have to pause you. No way. I yes would never way. have known that. Okay, please continue. Yes way. So <laughs> most of the women that I work with who have prolapse of the bladder, or maybe you don't know you have that, maybe you feel... Um, heaviness in your lower abdominals, or you have pee leaks when you cough, sneeze, right? We, we remember all this during the late stages of pregnancy, yep. or you run into the restroom and peeing more than 10 times a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff isn't normal. Well, a lot of those women have the neck hump. 
They have that mm -hmm. forward head posture because the bladder has fallen down and it's pulling the head forward. So if you're perpetuating that, it it's only going to make, it's going to exacerbate what you already have going on. So the best thing is to make sure that you've got your head sitting on top of the shoulders, right? Mm -hmm. And not in that forward position. And it's going to be easier once you've got that back support and the support of those pillows to be able to do that. Now, here is another big culprit of why so many women have that forward head posture, right? Because a lot yes. of times we're nursing and we're scrolling, a right? A thousand percent. <laughs> So I'm going to encourage you, support the elbow, have a pop socket or a loopy, okay. right, to where you can, you're not breaking at the, the wrist because carpal okay. tunnel is another big uh, affliction that a lot of new moms suffer with. And mm -hmm. that can be due to the relaxin. That's the hormone that allowed the pelvis to spread, right. the baby to come out. But when you are nursing, it takes longer for your body to get rid of completely all of that relaxin. So your, your joints are a little bit more loosey goosey, mm, okay. but making sure that you've got uh, something, you know, to hold on like a loopy or a pop socket and you're bringing phone to face, not here, mm -hmm. not like this. So this would be the most common cause of the forward head posture is is the yeah, phone scrolling for sure and i would encourage like i know sometimes some of us want to just zone out or feel productive or like this is a great time to answer text or this yeah. is a great time to do this and you know what like put on some soft music and maybe make it your time to just do your breath work mm -hmm. like or your prayer time or your meditation time, like, because your baby's going to get way more from that energetically mm -hmm. than, than trying to squeeze in those last couple things. Like folks know you just had a baby. Like if, if folks are pressing you to like respond to stuff, you know, you might need to think about making your circle a little smaller, mm -hmm. right? You, you need to give yourself grace and, and other folks will give you grace during this time. The folks that care about you. Yes. Yeah. The phone's a big one. Um, I mean, part of it is like you feel like you've lost your old self. And so just to like scroll some clothes on Amazon, you know, like feels good, but yes. there's definitely, definitely benefits to making it um, a quiet time. If, if you're trying to develop some sort of prayer practice or meditation practice, it can be a trigger. Like, okay, every time I nurse, you know, yeah. is when I also meditate or, or whatever you want to do. That could be really powerful. But also yeah. sometimes I scroll on Amazon because yes. I'm human. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I do get it. Well, because I mean, I, I mean, I stopped counting with Colin how many times a day because like one day, you know, my husband was working full time. And I mean, sometimes he would just come home and I would just be like, I'm so done. Like, I just need you to take this baby. I just need a shower. Like, yeah. and he'd be like, I don't understand. Like, what did you do? I'm like, I nursed. Like, I, oh I nursed all day. day. He's like, well, what do you mean? Like how many times? I'm like, I don't know, maybe like 15. He's like, oh, okay. Like, I'm like, hey, you don't understand. <laughs> like, yeah. like, I think it might even be more than that. Like I'm just so done, yeah. you know, I touched know. out. <laughs> touched out. So I, I bring that up in, um, in my resources because that's something for the partner to know too. Like it's not even you. I just can't have anybody touching me for a minute right now. I'm so touched out. And then it's funny when you read like, oh, baby should be nursing approximately eight times a day, every two to three. You're like, eight, how about 18? <laughs> so just for to prepare people, like it might be all the time for, for some time. And right. like you when were saying going for through growth too. spurts in particular. I mean, I had three boys and so did you. So yeah. like, I mean, I always knew when they were growing because it was like we were nursing like every hour, right? And then all of a sudden they'd be like, boom, okay, we're not in three month clothes anymore. You know, we're yes. in six, you know? Yes, you're right. You're inspiring me to think about the role of the partner. So when you were showing mm -hmm. um, like how to get that uh, ideal posture, because especially I think with a male partner, like they like to be able to solve a problem or they like yes. to have a plan or um, they can understand the visuals and like the mechanics of what you were saying. And when you are the one nursing, you don't even realize you're hunched over. 
So yeah. with the right tone and the right intention, if a partner is able to come over and say, hon, I noticed that you're a little hunched. Can I help you? Can I put a pillow under your elbow? So you get that posture that we saw in that video that we watched together yeah. before the baby was born. That would be such a beautiful um, role for the partner to play in preventing, you know, long lasting injury essentially is what you're saying. Yes. Because, you know, as an exercise physiologist, some of the injuries that I have commonly seen over the past 27 years are rotator cuff injuries. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we're in this posture, in this posture, and it creates a lack of stability in the shoulders. And then we're driving and the baby, you know, is in the middle, right between the two seats and yes. the pacifier falls yes. and the baby starts to cry and we're driving. And so we're doing this number, right? Yeah. Where we're reaching, reaching, trying to get that. And that's when it happens. I can't, I've had oh at least gosh. five moms that I've trained who have torn their rotator cuff doing the exact same thing. I can, we've all done that. I can picture that for, or for me, it was like a pinched neck. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So it's, it's due to a lack of stability and strength in those joints. And mm -hmm. so, you know, it's, it's a much, it's a way to be kind to yourself as well to, mm -hmm. as baby to baby and the rest of your family, because then when you get injured, it makes everything so much harder. I mean, it doesn't make it impossible, but, you know, try holding a baby with a torn rotator cuff. It's, it's yeah. no fun. Um, yep. So these are all like, you know, when, when we're more holistic minded, we're always seeking proactive care. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely something that you can um, do proactively to help you avoid injuries in the future that come from, and the baby wearing, you know, I mean, yeah. even baby wearing in the beginning, mm -hmm. we're typically, you know, we're, we're bending over changing diapers and padding yep. bottoms in the crib. And so there's just a lot of this. And so one of the things that we recommend is something called um, a book opener stretch. Now, this mm -hmm. is something you can do in bed, right? Doesn't have to be getting on the floor because with the weak core, that can be a challenge in itself. But dropping the knees to one side and opening the chest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So knees are bent. You pull them in towards your chest. You drop your knees to one side, you extend your arms, and then you rotate, bring your hands together mm -hmm. and then open and look away. So my mm -hmm. knees picture, my knees facing this way yep. and I'm opening in the opposite direction, trying to just open everything up, including the low back, taking mm -hmm. some deep breaths, and then you can repeat that on the other side. And if you just do that a couple times each morning, that can have a tremendous difference on, on your posture and how you're feeling in your body. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to do it tomorrow. And I think, I mean, it reminds me of yoga class. I think that's one of the stretches we do towards the end usually. Um, but that's, that's great practical advice. Um, and, uh, oh, I did want to give you a chance to talk about your services. So Tighten your tinkler. Obviously, it's the best name ever. Anyone I've pulled, all right, I'm like, I'm interviewing someone from Tighten Your Tinkler. And like, what a great name. So excellent choice there. Um, but yeah, give us a call to action for women. Um, you know, tell us maybe what they're experiencing and then what you provide and how it can help them. Sure. So uh, we work with a lot of different women, but typically the women that come to us are more holistic minded. They're looking for care that they can uh, do from the comfort of their own home mm -hmm. and that, you know, looking for solutions to pee leaks and uh, back pain, um, heaviness in the lower abdominals, mm -hmm. uh, DR, which is that diastasis recti, the separation of the abdominal muscles that is supposed to happen during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. But uh, oftentimes that does not come back together and close and it creates a lot of weakness in both the core and the pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. um, many women, you know, there's a different series of diagnoses that women are given sometimes at their follow up appointment. Sometimes they're told they have hernia of their vagina or that they might have a little prolapse, but it's not specifically said, is it their bladder? Is it their uterus? Is it their yeah. rectum? Some women are told they have a cystocele, which is essentially a hernia of the bladder, which oftentimes is accompanied with 
prolapse. Uh, cystocele just means there's a tear in the connective tissue and the bladder is falling down. Mm -hmm. Well, it, most women with prolapse have a cystocele. Um, okay. So there's just all kinds of things that can happen. Some women, you know, for myself dealing with that uh, fourth degree tear after my first baby, if I circle back to that story. So what ended up happening was I got an infection um, in my stitches and uh, needed to be seen before my six week appointment to get rid of that. So I, I always just encourage women, you know, we know our bodies better than anyone else, just like, you know, your baby better than anyone else. And if something feels off or not normal, don't be afraid to look down there. The presence of swelling and pus is never normal. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you, you want to seek help if you are seeing that regardless of how far along postpartum you are, because, um, you know, that can lead to all sorts of other issues, including UTIs, recurrent UTIs, and um, just a whole host of issues, including, you know, mastitis and other infections that you can um, get postpartum. So I want to just encourage women to advocate for themselves and not be afraid to look at your own body as you are healing so that you're able to say, yes, this is looking better or no, this is looking worse. So um, we, we have a couple of different offerings for women who are dealing with all these issues. The first mm -hmm. one is something called Healing from Home, and it is specific to the postpartum new mom. Um, it is a workbook that has a video library, and it's really kind of a pick and choose type of situation as to mm -hmm not overwhelm uh, women with too much at once. But the video library has a video of Christina and I walking you through the breastfeeding ergonomics, along with how to check yourself for a DR, checking mm -hmm. your scar tissue, making sure that things are healing properly, as well as a six week checklist to, to say, hey, here are things that most doctors aren't checking for. Mm. Here are some suggested questions to ask your healthcare provider at that appointment um, so that you can advocate for yourself. Wow. And then our signature program is really to address a lot of the P issues, the back and hip issues, really getting to the root of those problems, which is simply, you know, activating all the dormant muscles because it's common for your glutes to kick off in end stage pregnancy as that center of gravity moves further away, flat butt syndrome kicks in when those glutes <laughs> kick off that, you know, those deep abdominals and pelvic floor get weak. And so we really help you activate that in a 10 minute a day sequence done from the comfort of your own home. And then lastly, we offer something, uh, we walk women up through getting back into their exercise routine. So mm. signature program members after their first 30 to 60 days have the opportunity to upgrade into something we call the vault, which goes into how to regain stability in your neck and shoulders and a full body mobility because momming is an extreme sport <laughs> and it is That's legit that you get injuries from it. I see, I've seen it a lot and experienced it myself. So yeah. regaining that stability, that strength, and then we have some fun cardio and strength workouts in there. And again, no longer than 30 minutes, all done from the comfort of your own home. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what we're about is just empowering moms like yourself to make good choices uh, for themselves. And so those are the offerings that we have. And like I said, we have a bunch of freebies that women can have access to our 9090 decompression. We offer if it's a brand spanking new mom watching this or listening to this, we mm -hmm. have our six week checklist. That's a part of that healing from home guide that we offer. And I'll send you the links to all of these. Um, That's so helpful. Mm -hmm. And we have a special gift for your listeners. We're Yay. offering a $50 off coupon for your listeners to either of, of the healing from home or our signature program. They just have to enter in the code spilling the milk and they'll get $50 off. Perfect. Oh, I love that. This, this is really empowering because it is something that at first it feels embarrassing or you don't know that it's not normal or you don't want to say it out loud to find out if it's normal. So if it's something that really can sort of, you can DIY it with these resources that you're providing. Um, 
that I think that's really going to help a lot of people. I'm really excited. Well, thanks. And I am excited to have a resource for our new moms with your breastfeeding boot camp. Like, yes, yeah. this is fantastic. Well, and to be honest, so I'm in the final stages of um, finalizing the content. You know, I'm going to call out some of what we talked about today because this is so relevant. And then um, and then I can send people your way for all those free resources. That sounds amazing. Well, thank you so much, Jen. Is there anything we didn't get to talk about today um, that you're hoping to share? Oh, my goodness. Well, there's there's always actually I have a breastfeeding tip. I had a really good friend of mine who had a block duck and like, she knows I'm like the essential oil queen. Mm -hmm. And so she boxed me and was like, I don't know what to do about this. And so like this cleared her block duck up in like 24 hours and it's super simple. And I'm sure like everybody knows, okay, put heat on it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So you want to try to keep nursing and pumping to try to, and massaging the breast, right? Yeah. You put heat, but then cover your breast after you've nursed, cover your breast in a mixture of about a quarter size of castor oil and put about 10 drops of peppermint oil, which is a vasodilator. So castor yes. oil is a natural decongestant. Mm -hmm. And uh, peppermint oil really is a vasodilator. And so you combine those two things, you put that on the spot. And look, I'm, I've gotten block ducks like here. Yeah, I know Every exactly time I nurse, I'm exactly like, right. I'm pointing to my spot here. Yeah. But you put that on there after you put the heat on for a couple minutes. And you do that at least two or three times a day. And that puppy, as long as you're not, you know, haven't progressed into mastitis yet, which is an yeah. infection that needs to be treated. Um, it should clear that puppy right up. Wow. So you're saying like very locally, just put the oil mixture right where, because I, um, this is anecdotal, but I had a friend who was at a, um, like a girl's night where someone was diffusing peppermint oil. And then she went to pump the next day and her supply was reduced noticeably, but that means she was being exposed to that peppermint for a while. Yes. Um, and so you're saying just very locally, you know, topically rubbing it on. Um, yes. And I think we should call that out. And I still need to research if that's, you know, if other people have had the same experience, but it, it speaks to the power of the peppermint because in your case, you're saying, yeah, it really did sort of like dry up that all that extra milk that was in that one spot. Well, and I, you have to use it with the castor oil. Got it. Like I can't save enough of it needs to be with a carrier oil specifically castor oil because it's a decongestant um, it's going to break break up what is in there and the castor oil is really trying to open that duct so okay. as long as you're continuing with your regular regular nursing yes cycle so that you're not you know the other thing that can happen is you don't want to nurse as much it's hurting or whatnot right. and that can decrease your milk supply for sure Yep. But obviously oh, every woman is always unique and, yeah. you know, some, some things I know, I know for me, there were certain things that would reduce my milk supply and others that sped it up. So everyone's got to listen to her body and what it's telling her for yep. sure. But the more tools we can have in the toolbox, I'm like wishing I could go back to myself um, at this oh, point, like eight years too. ago and just hand, <laughs> hand that Emily, like a bottle of, and I had castor oil. I should have handed her some peppermint put the two together and that would have helped. So thank you for that tip. That's really helpful. For sure. I think right, that's, so I think that's the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to check though, because, um, sometimes, some, you know, something comes to you. You're like, Oh, before I go, we got to share this. So very good. Um, well, it was so lovely meeting you. I think we could talk forever. We've both got the three boys. Um, we've got, a, you know, a lot of alignment in what we're trying to bring to the world. And hopefully yeah. this is just the beginning of, of a partnership in serving women who are pregnant and new moms and just looking for a better way than maybe what the mainstream, um, I call it the mainstream assembly line of birth and breastfeeding, you know, can offer. There's actually a lot more and there's so many women that would love to help you and connect with you. And I think that's what yes. we're both trying to do. Yes. And yes, couldn't agree more. It was awesome meeting you, Emily. And thank you so much for what you are doing for women because it takes a village. <laughs> it really does. <laughs>
Jen and Christina and helping my listeners find their program. We obviously share a lot in common. We are both dealing with subjects that don't often come up in polite conversation, except when you're in it, when you're having a breastfeeding challenge or when you pee every time you laugh. It is your real life. It is impacting your every day. And so I think all of us are on a mission to really help women find the resources they need when they need them and make that accessible. So again, head to our show notes and you can find the links for the 9090 decompression for back and hip relief that she talked about, um, as well as a six week follow up appointment checklist that's specifically for new moms. And then you can head to tightenyourtinkler.com and learn lots more about the programs she described, Healing From Home and their signature program. And remember to use the coupon code SPILLTHEMILK for $50 off. And if you have any follow-up questions, they're on Instagram, Tighten Your Tinkler. Um, there's you know contact information on their website. Jen was just so personable and approachable, as you could tell from our conversation. Um, I know her and Christina are just so happy to help you if this is what you need in your life right now. Thank you for listening and for your support. If you enjoy what we're doing here, please subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Please share with a friend. And if you'd enjoy being a guest on our podcast yourself, you can reach out to me at emily at empoweredbumpsandboobs.com. Thank you and be well.